recording. Okay, nice. Hey guys, welcome to uh, the the second edition, the second edition of uh, Daily Dose of Classic, where uh, I'm going to be doing this again to start off my streams uh, every single day until Classic, or at least at least every single stream until Classic. That's the goal. Um, there might be a one-off time or something where I don't do this, but I think typically I want to start off my streams doing a little bit of classic talk, doing a little bit of this, and then uh, potentially posting it to YouTube. We'll, we'll see if I end up deciding to do that. So, uh, so yeah, what I want to talk to you guys about today is something that's been on my mind uh, a little bit, a little bit, and it has to do with uh, changes, actually. Yeah, I know, I know. It has to do with changes. It's going to be a little bit... Uh, it's a spicy topic, okay? And I think not enough people are actually talking about this. Yeah, I know. Monkey W, I know, I know. I think not a lot of people talk are talking about this. Uh, mostly, I mean, really, it has a lot to do with... <clears throat> I think it has a lot to do with people feeling like they have to cater to a specific whatever, right? Uh, a specific maybe agenda or narrative or something like that whenever they talk about classic wire or whatever um and it has to do with basically how classic has gone so far the development of classic so far and uh what we're going to be looking at going forward right what we do know what we don't know um do -do 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 -do. where are we um so where am i let me fix this let me fix let me fix where is it there it is. There's that. There's that. Good. Now we're good. We're solid. Uh, okay. So basically, uh, I think what's happening so far has been pretty good, right? Uh, there's obviously some things about classic that are not going to be exactly like retail vanilla, right? And, and, and we've talked about this before. The meta for retail vanilla WoW was different than the retail from private servers, or sorry, the meta from private servers. And then the meta of private servers is going to be different than the meta of classic, right? The goal for classic really hits on this design philosophy, right? And uh, let's let's go ahead and talk about this, right? Let's go ahead and watch this video and then I'll keep talking. We had this 112 data that we've been able to restore and we viewed that as, as almost sacrosanct. That's everything from you know the world and the quest lines and the stories to individual player abilities, creature health, tuning, and so forth. There's some changes in code and architecture in the way the client responds to the server and vice versa, that if we let stand using the modern structure, might have caused this data to produce a different result when it comes to things like game balance. And we definitely worried that if we ever felt like the result was different in a way that compelled us to crack this open, it would very much be like opening Pandora's box. Because the second we start to substitute our modern judgment to solve problems from 12 years ago, we are deviating from our goal of a historical recreation of the game as it was and making something different. And that's something we want to avoid. So let me give you some examples of these problems as we dealt with them. Okay. A so lot of these let's go back to this. Really clear cut. You know, at the start of the project, uh, we came up with that response. So, so by the way, this is, this is from BlizzCon uh, last year, right? Two years ago. Two BlizzCons ago, they announced Classic is coming out. Uh, this BlizzCon, this last BlizzCon, BlizzCon 2018, uh, they really like kind of delved into Classic and what we're going to expect and this and that, right? Um, <clears throat> these are like the three key points of their design philosophy, right? Deliver an authentic experience. High priority on integrity of social dynamics. And avoid messing with the 1.12 data, right? Meaning, what they want is they want an authentic vanilla experience and they want to base the game off of 1.12 vanilla WoW, right? So they, they want to keep it as close to 1.12 vanilla WoW as possible. Uh, and so far, pretty much everything they've done, uh, at least in their power, shows that that's what they want to do, right? Now, there's certain things that don't really reflect that, right? And, and that is just the nature of how things go with, like how the network structure is and this and that nowadays. Um, we're talking about like layering and some other stuff like that, right? They're going to have to do something to account for having so many more people on the servers. Um, <clears throat> but also on top of that, uh, there's some like inherent issues that come up with, there's some inherent issues, that inherent issues that come up with 
having everything be based off of 1.12, but the end game content being based off of whatever's in phase one, which is essentially patch 1.1 and 1.2. I think the way Blizzard is looking at the phases is essentially there's six phases. Each phase is kind of like two patches, right? Phase one is one, 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 two. Phase two is one, three, and one, four. Phase, wait, phase two is one, three, and one, four. Phase three is one, five, and one, six, and so on, right? Um, I think that you're going to potentially have an issue with, you have 1.12, so you have 16 debuff slots. You have end game itemization, right? They, they don't have true progressive itemization. They have partial progressive itemization in the sense that items are going to be added as they were added in the game, right? But they're not going to be updating the items as, as time went on, right? So if something gets buffed later on, if some early, uh, early content items get buffed later on, those buffs are going to be in the game from the beginning. Um, also on top of that, you're going to have all of the talent reworks put into the game from the beginning. Uh, this changes how some classes play entirely. Uh, at least whenever you look back on like retail vanilla to, to classic to private servers, private servers were like this too. They, they were based off 1.12. Um, <clears throat> for example, like paladins, con like rep paladins, right? Constantly we're getting buffed all the way until 1.12. So whenever a lot of people look back on, oh, well, I remember rent and vanilla sucked. It's like, yeah, for a lot of vanilla, it did, right? Uh, and, and it's still not the best, right? It's, is it playable? Yes, it's playable. And that, that's kind of always been my point with it, right? Like, you can do enough to where it's, like, possible to play it. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have all these 1.12. So what do we have here? Let's, let's go ahead and take some notes. Uh, paint. So what do we have here? We have... We have 16 debuff slots... Okay, 16 debuffs instead of eight. That, that's supposed to change in 1.7, which would be phase four. Uh, 16 debuffs. You have 1.12 itemization. One point twelve talents. And 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 class changes everything from the very last version of vanilla. Okay, so now here's the issue that comes with all this, right? And, and here's, here is something. This is something that's a big deal for me, okay? They're basing the entire game off of... They're basing the entire game off of, off of 1.12, right? Which is fine, but... And this is something that I, I brought this up over a year and a half ago. And uh, I'm, I'm still worried this might be the case. I said that if they were to do something like this, where they have all the talents in, where they have, they, they don't do progressive itemization, they don't do 16 debuffs, stuff like this, then what's going to happen is you have all these bosses in raids that are based off of 1.12. Okay. That means these are all post nerf. These are all the final versions of these bosses in vanilla. Wow. Right. And in some ways, that's fine, right? In some ways, that's fine in terms of like in patch 1.12, whenever all the content was in the game, it was not a big deal to have like an early MC, right? Or sorry, sorry, uh, a nerfed MC, right? Because, and it's nerfed in the sense that, you know, they, they, they had nerfed some stuff, nerfed some bosses, whatever. Uh, but also on top of that, better items, better talents, more debuffs, more basically player effectiveness, right? That's what we should call it, right? It's not just more damage, but like healing everything, right? More player effectiveness. So here's what's going to happen. That's fine in phase six, okay? That's not a big deal in phase six because at that point, there's so much more content in the game. Uh, they, add, they buff stuff, they add stuff in, whatever, so people can go back and they can complete that or that older content. Maybe if they didn't get a, get a, they didn't get a chance to originally, whenever it was current content, whatever. But now, whenever you're in phase one, and, and tell me what you guys think about this. Whenever you're in, you can't see. Oh my bad. Sorry. Uh, and now you're now that you're in phase one. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, you have a situation where 
you have all this, except Rag isn't, right? Molten Core isn't the, the, the lowest tier of raid. It's the highest tier of raid, right? And my concern without any sort of like public testing, right? Because I, I don't know. I haven't seen it, right? Nobody's seen it publicly, right? Uh, anything outside of Blizzard. My concern is that by trying really, really hard to go with this specific point, right, of your design philosophy, avoid messing with the 1.12 data, which is a fancy way of saying what? This is a fancy way of saying no changes. That's, that's basically what it is, right? But what's happening is by going so hard with this, are they going to take away from this bullet point here? Deliver an authentic experience. You see what I'm saying? I think if everything is better, everything is buffed, everything is stronger, players are more effective, and then you go to like pre-nerf versions of these bosses, right? Which they don't have the original information. What I'm saying is if they have to tweak the values or something, right? If they have to tweak the values... Where are we at? Okay, I, I want to make sure I'm not overlapping anymore. Um, if they have to tweak the values of armor, okay, armor, resistances, health, and damage, right? If you have if you have to tweak these things, then what are these things? What does is, what is tweaking these things mean? These are technically changes, right? These are changes that goes against this bullet point in their design philosophy, right? Avoid messing with the 1.12 data. However, these are changes that could make this bullet point better. It could deliver a more authentic experience because you don't want to go in and have the raids be a total cakewalk. I understand that the, the, the mechanics and stuff have been a while, like the raids and stuff, they're not mechanically challenging, right? I, I think most people, uh, at least compared to retail, wow. I think most people would agree with that, right? I, I would say most everyone who's, who's played both would agree with that. <clears throat> so now you're sitting here where you have two conflicting design decisions right, design philosophies of trying to deliver an authentic experience without messing with the 1.12 data, right? And, and what I think, this is something that's just been on my mind lately. What do you care about as a player? And, and answer me this, okay? Answer me this. What do you care about the player, as a player? Do you care about opening up a data table and knowing, oh, well, this guy has exactly, you know, 3974 armor and this is like, do you, do you care about that? Or do you care about sitting down, playing the game, and saying, you know what? This feels right. This this feels this feels like this feels like I it should feel. Which would be delivering an authentic experience. So, in my opinion, I think that this bullet point is more valuable than this one. And if you want the game to feel right and you want to have a good player experience, I'm not saying make it artificially difficult. I'm not saying you change mechanics. I'm not saying any of that, right? Because <clears throat> it's almost like a, it's almost like a spectrum, right? It, it's almost like a spectrum. We all, we all know how spectrums work, right? Uh, we're here on Twitch after all. So it's like a spectrum, right? Where you could say right here is quote authentic vanilla experience right and you might be they might be right here right now right I, i'm just they're, they're on you know what i should say i should say they're on this side of the spectrum You see what I'm saying? They're on this side of the spectrum. 
and where they might be on this side of the spectrum. I don't know because I haven't tested the raids. This is this is the point. Like I haven't tested the raids, so I don't know. But this is something that's been on my mind, and I feel like people typically don't want to talk about this stuff because everybody's so worried about oh well that that's changes. That's this, and it's like dude, like you gotta be willing to have these discussions, right? Like you gotta be you gotta be smart enough to to like people have got to be smart enough to understand what you're saying, right? <clears throat> and what's happening is if you're on this side of the spectrum then you can push it more this way in order to kind of hit this point of being a more authentic vanilla experience. Like the goal would be to, to deviate towards an authentic vanilla experience. The counter argument is like, okay, well, if we want the players to have a better experience, right? If we want to have the typical player base have a better experience, does that mean we change the honor system? Does that mean we do this? Does that mean we do that? Uh, so that the typical player will have a better experience? No. Because what happens, like, let's say by changing the honor system, you know what you're doing? You're going this way and you're deviating away from the authentic vanilla experience, right? So any sort of, what I'm saying is any sort of decision that uh, goes against this point in the design philosophy, point number three, avoid messing with the 1.12 data, should only be done with the intention to bolster this point or another point, right? Which is deliver an authentic experience in this case. How do, you, how do you guys feel about what I'm saying? And, and, and really, like, I, I'm kind of just... Uh, I'm kind of just kind of talking about how I, I feel about the situation based entirely on speculation. Why? Because I haven't played the raids. Nobody's played the raids. Nobody's beta tested, or at least publicly, beta tasted the raids. So nobody really... Beta tasted? Beta tested the raids. So nobody really knows, right? Uh, I'm sure they've done internal testing and stuff. There was the leaked... Uh, there was the leaked like pre-made level 60 character thing that came out on a beta update. Um, I'm assuming they use those characters to go through and test stuff and, and just make sure the mechanics and stuff work. But you're not really going to know, they, they're not really going to have tested this with those characters, right? Because if you are in like full tier three doing Molten Core, like obviously you're going to smoke the content, right? So what what is your guys' opinions on this? <clears throat> 1.12 is going to make MC beat up BL and ZG post nerfs. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. The only problem with them messing with boss stats is that they won't stop at that. You know, Blizzard will change items as well to try and balance. And we all know how the Blizzard balance team is. See, well, and that's the thing, right? You you have to go with it, right? And that's that's kind of the concern that a lot of people have. Well, it's Blizzard, so they're going to they're gonna just go too far with it and start tweaking with everything. And that's my point, right? And that's, that's kind of why I talked about this with the honor system. You don't want to deviate away from the authentic vanilla experience, right? the goal would be to go towards an authentic vanilla experience. And I think that it's kind of like a, uh, it's almost like a low, um, it, it's not really a fully thought out thing to say that, okay, well, we 100%, we don't want to avoid messing with the 1.12 data, but what if you avoiding messing with the 1.12 data while basing the game off of 1.12, but releasing the game in phase one, which is what they should do, by the way, with only Molten Core as the end game content at first, will deliver an authentic experience because people going into Molten Core, like it's potentially going to be like a huge cakewalk. It might be, it might be incredibly easy. Right. So I, I don't like, I, I, I don't like the whole like slippery slope argument. I think it's a fallacy, right? At the end of the day, like, sure, you can, you can have the personal opinion that the Blizzard balance team is not good. The retail wow balance team is not good. They don't know what they're doing, whatever your personal opinion is. Right. But, but for the sake of this argument and, and we're talking about full, like, like, design philosophy stuff i think it's unfair to make that judgment and and completely like i guess cuck the conversation right i agree uh delivering in frick i lost chat i agree delivering an authentic experience is paramount as they're starting with more tell talents classes etc yeah exactly brandon like and, and like i said I, I think enough people like are not willing to talk about this i i kind of brought this up months ago i brought this up over a year ago and people were like, oh, S fan wants changes to classic. Like some, some like old private server people like try to make this whole thing. About, oh, S fan wants change to classic. And I was like, no, I just have the foresight to understand that if the game were to release in, in a different sort of state, right? We're talking 16 debuffs, this and that, then we have to be one to understand like basically there's the potential of changes to classic is actually closer to, to what people want as no changes. 
Does that make sense? Because even though you may be messing with the 1.12 data, you're delivering an authentic experience or closer to an authentic experience, right? We all know that the, the retail vanilla meta is different from the private server meta, which is going to be different than the classic meta. I, I think anybody who played in retail vanilla and also played private servers knows that. <clears throat> I have an example of negative effect of non progressionization that could affect the game big time. Hear me out. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, like there's there's certainly some issues, right? Uh, it's it's like well, there's like partial progressive itemization right now. There's um, there's basically like they're they're releasing the items as they were released, but they're not updating the items as they were updated. They were giving you the 1.12 version. Isn't 1.12 part of the authentic experience though? So it all breaks down to there's no patch progression, thus no 100% accurate representation of what WoW was from 2004 2007. Correct. Well, basically, here's the thing. The problem with this whole thing, right? Here's another overarching problem with this whole thing. There has never been a version of Vanilla WoW that's existed, right? Officially, with 1.12 talents, 1.12 balance changes, all that stuff, right? 1.12 itemization and phase one content. Right, the, the way that Blizzard is rolling it out, right? 16 debuffs, all that stuff, right? With phase one content. So you're trying to take that and then you kind of have to wrap your head around, okay, now let's try to make this authentic. Well, it's not going to be 100% authentic, right? But you have to have like a level of understanding to realize that like, hey, like you got to, uh, they, show, they show a graph here, right? Uh, early on in this thing. Where, where is the, there's an image in here and anybody who's watched this has seen this where they talk. Oh yeah, here it is. So they talk about trying to stitch these things together, right? You kind of have to find a way. So when we thought about this plan, we realized very quickly and early on that these pieces, they just don't fit. The new source code doesn't know how to load the old data. Omar says this about the data, right? But I think in some ways this also applies to the design of the game as well. Right. And uh, I, I think that uh, I, I think there's just got to be a level of understanding there that the goal should be this authentic vanilla experience. And here's the thing. And I'm just being completely honest about this. None of this might even matter. They might they might have tested the raids and, and I'm just uh, kind of being boy who cried wolf here. Right. And, and that's just me being honest. That's how I am. Like, that's uh, I try and be like objective about this stuff. Um, this is all based entirely on speculation because not any anybody outside of the blizzard uh quality assurance testing team internal testing team uh, has any idea of how the raids go in classic wow as far as like, any, like there's speculation and stuff right but uh nobody really truly knows um how it's gonna go because we didn't we didn't do that in the beta right uh it's extremely delicate and requires a lot of finesse and the blizzard is completely incapable of nowadays but see that's that's my point like it's we we can't we can't stop discussion we can't we can't like cuck the conversation by by just claiming that uh blizzard is incompetent or whatever right like it's it, i think it's totally fine for people to have their personal opinions about this stuff but a, a big issue that's kind of gone on and this is a regular thing right people aren't willing to talk about things people aren't willing to to have these conversations because they kind of like oh the buck stops there blizzard's balance team sucks and it's like I, i'm not necessarily saying that like you need to uh I'm not necessarily saying one way or the other, right? Like, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of Retail WoW, right? Not because I hate Retail WoW. I just don't like the game as much anymore. I wish the game was better, right? I want Retail WoW to be good, you know? Uh, anyway, <clears throat> I, I, don't, I don't think that's particularly fair. Uh, Forsaken Paladin. To get a real class experience with current knowledge, play skill, updated talents, ETC, Blizzard would have to overtune earlier content more than it ever was to compensate for this, which is a lot more changes than just reverting to earlier difficulty. Um... So here's the thing. I, I think based on how the game is now, it's it's going to be based off of 1.12, right? So that's like a whole nother discussion. You know what I'm saying? What what you're saying is like a whole a whole nother can of worms. Uh, but I, I think to basically like it's it's four things that I'm looking at, right? And and there might be other ways to do this, but I'm talking about armor, resists, right? Resists, HP, and, and damage values, right? Like. Uh, I think the typical player, I would say the overwhelming majority of the player base does not care to go look up a, a data table, right? 
And, uh, oh, uh, hmm, I see that there's a 7.8% uh, difference in resistance value. Like, who cares, right? Like, I, I think most people don't care about that. I think most people care to to play the game and be like, okay, this this feels right. This feels like vanilla WoW to me, you know? Real vanilla would be would be if they go from 1.0 to 1.12. Well, kind of, right? 1.1 is the, the release patch. Um but even then, like they, they wouldn't do that, right? I, I think releasing the game in 1.12 and going or 1.1 going all the way to 1.12 would, would be a, one a huge undertaking, right? That's probably not worth doing, uh, and also like and also uh, I don't think it would be very good, right? <clears throat> I, I don't think it would be a very good experience. Uh, do you want them to change dungeon bosses as well? Uh, if you do, then wouldn't that make it less untethering for people that are leveling? Um, I think the dungeon stuff is not as big of a deal, right? The the dungeon stuff because people are saying that too like well I, and I don't know I I don't know I don't know about dungeon difficulty right if the dungeon difficulty was uh, easier or harder or whatever like everybody remembers it being harder right but that's partially just because of like you growing up and thinking that right. Ralph Copter down donated three dollars. Doing Valister is a guild breaker when she's tauntable versus Prenier having to manage threat and have awesome off tanks is not authentic. Is she is she tauntable by 1.12? I actually don't even know if she's tauntable by 1.12. Are you sure? You're almost positive. I I, I don't know. I don't know about that. But yeah, that like that's a that's a major that totally changes the fight. Yeah, it totally changes the fight. If if that's the case, I don't know. I I honestly don't remember. I don't know. Uh, Ruffle Cops, down. Thank you for the three dollars. J Magnum, thank you for the Twitch Prime four months. Names Christmas Twitch Prime. Sop Master Twitch Prime thirteen months. Jelly Bean Twitch Prime thirteen months. FXAF, thank you for the two months. Granny Nani, thank you for the twelve month resub to Loctite. You're helping him. You're you're pushing him along. Thanks, Granny Nani. Um, yeah. Uh, the fact is, we're better players now compared to back then. Oh yeah, well, without a doubt, B Switch. Um, boosting health armor resistance even even by a bit would help offset our current knowledge, and would help make a better, more rewarding ex MC experience. Well, I, I don't think you want to. I don't think you want to do any of that to counterbalance against knowledge of the game, right? You you don't want to you don't want to push back against knowledge of the game because that's different, right? That's because now you're talking about external factors, right? You want to keep it like completely internal, right? Where you're talking about everything's based off of 1.12, you know, um, and obviously, I, and there's this is the argument. Well, authentic vanilla experience is never gonna feel the same as it was back then. Yeah, but I I keep saying that I've I've been saying this right. Uh, classic is different from private servers is different from vanilla right. The meta is different. The experience is different. Um, that's just how it is, right? It, it, it is just how it is. But the goal of classic WoW is to move as closely towards... This is at 12 minutes. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, the goal of Classic WoW, or WoW Classic, is going to be to move as close to an authentic experience as possible, right? But everybody everybody understands that you're not going to have 100%, right? I think that's why it's important to get your opinion since you're so close to it. Do you feel that the Blizzard is considering vanilla experience the primary factor in their methodology while developing Classic? Well, yeah, absolutely, Arctix. But I, I'm worried that this bullet point is going to hold this point back that's that's basically the that's basically my my concern right that's basically what i'm talking about here is i think that when you're looking at design philosophy my concern is that by by going so hard on like no changes behind the scenes right in the data that you end up taking away from from what would be a a more no changes in terms of what the average player thinks of when they think of no changes, right? They want the game to feel like vanilla WoW. So deviate from the authentic data table to the authentic feeling. I like it. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of what my point is. Now again, I, and I keep saying this, and I and I and I can't stress this enough. I could be completely wrong about this, right? But this is something that's been on my mind lately, and I really wanted to talk about it today, right? I I really wanted to talk about it today about how. Um, I, I just, I think nobody is really talking about this because I, I think people are concerned about like, oh, well, I don't want to look like I want changes and stuff like this. And I'm like, no, like that the conversation is so much deeper than that. Right. It, it's not like it's, it's, uh, 
it's like people trying to make it out to be like some vapid thing and it changes rage, no changes. Like it's, it's funny, right? It's a meme, but at the same time, like I, I do think that, that people need to be willing to talk about this stuff a little bit more, more candidly. Right. Uh, and, and I, like I said, I even brought this up a, like a year and a half ago. I brought this up a year and a half ago and people were like, Oh, S fan wants changes. Oh, S fan, this and that. Like it's the same. It was, it's coming from like the same crowd of people, right? The, it's the same crowd of people that try and like, like lie about you and stuff like that all the time. Right. <clears throat> Honestly, bro, it's a valid concern, especially with how far the custom development has to go in order to implement the old system on the new back end. Yeah. That's kind of what I think. Uh, you're by far the most admirable guy out of all the classic wild guys, but please stop saying right after every other word. Keep going with your good stuff. Yeah, I know. Right. Uh, that's just what I do. Right. <laughs> No, I appreciate that. But look, some people just have ticks, like like certain things that they just like they just do, right? Like they just like I I, I just did it again, you know? Like I'm sorry, like that's that's, that's just the way I talk. Graphic designer donated five dollars. <clears throat> Take my five bucks for your nice graphic skills. <laughs> right off death just reset for fourteen. <laughs> Thank months. you for the five dollars, graphic Thanks designer. Thanks again for giving me that beta key. I, I have no beta I really keys. Really enjoyed my time in the beta. S fan. Thanks, right of death. Thank you for the fourteen months, dude. Stripe in, thank you for the 13 for months. 13 months. How would you feel about just a texture overhaul with a wad? Master Chief Collection Switch for Classic. How would you feel about a texture overhaul with wad master? Oh, oh, like in that. No, no, no. I, I don't think they should do that at all. Uh, because he here's the thing. Uh, I, I talked about this before where it's like, even if it's client side, right? What's going to happen? There's certain like, there's like, certain textures and animations and stuff like this. Like it ends up being a, uh, like the, with the new models, I think it comes kind of with new animations too, right? And there's like almost like oh, like indirect balance implications of that. For example, in Burning Crusade, I remember there was a patch where they changed the they changed the animation of uh, Blessing of Freedom and Blessing of Protection to what you currently have in Retail WoW. For example, in Blessing of Protection, there's a big crown above your head, whereas in Vanilla WoW, it's just the bottom of the animation where it's just like a bubble, and it made it much more easy to see. And it was kind of like an indirect nerf in arenas. A lot of paladins were really like if any of you guys arena in, in, in Burning Crusade as paladins, like a lot of people were really pissed off about it because uh, it was like, oh, well, now my now my freedom, now my now my uh, my freedom and my my bop are way more apparent to people whenever I cast them. And then, you know, it's, it's just purge and dispel more easily. Right. <clears throat> is classic while passing over the growing community of ERP players and how can they implement more dynamics for this burgeoning group? I, I don't know. Gravity splash. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know. Um, yeah, it's going to be really good. The fact that private servers are not authentic. So if there's a change, it is authentic to the 1.12 data. And I want that change. Uh, the fact is that private servers are not authentic. So if there is a change that is authentic to the 1.12 data and I want that change, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm talking data versus experience, right? Data versus experience is kind of what I'm what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> is your concern more based around how spells evolved or how itemization changed? Uh, everything, right? Itemization, class balance. Because I mean, even on private servers, you're based off of 1.12, right? But you have 16 debuffs. Cla uh, you have class balance changes. You have itemization buffs, and then also here's another one. It's the bosses. The bosses got nerfed, right? Now. There is no, there is no data. Blizzard doesn't have data of, of the original, like 1.1 patch molten core. They don't have it, right? They've said this before. Blizzard was a very different company back then. The, like the people there now say it. The people who used to work at Blizzard would say that too. I mean, Ke Kevin Jordan, John Stats, Mark Kern. Like we've talked to all those guys, right? We we know it's a very different company, right? Old Blizzard Pepe hands, right? But but one of the things that they did a one of the one of the bad things about old blizzard i guess is that they just didn't have every single little thing logged so everything that you see on private servers as pre-nerf is all based off of forum posts and uh just ba basically just whatever evidence is out there online but it's not actual it's not like real like hard evidence you see what i'm saying z striker thank you for the twitch prime how do you feel about servers classic is almost here and they haven't announced how many servers we're getting and what will be the pop cap or queue uh, well, there's not, the, the layering is basically there to counteract against the population cap. Um, layering is essentially like a dynamic server cluster is how it's going to be treated. <clears throat> You're not going to have to worry about queues or population cap. I don't think until phase two, whenever they say they're going to be getting rid of layering. Uh, I'm not really concerned about them not having put out a server list yet. 
Uh, I think that's not a big deal. And I think they probably they probably won't do that until the day or maybe the day before they uh, open up the server for the character creation. Mm -hmm. um, are you saying that content will be too easy because of the meta changes in player skill growth? It will become stale. I don't think talking about like player skill growth and stuff is, is fair in this argument. I, I think it needs to be completely like based in the game. You know, uh, I, I think it needs to, to be completely based in the game. And in this specific case, you have all the changes that we talked about, right? All, all the things that are different that we've talked about uh, from the beginning of Vanilla WoW to the end of Vanilla WoW, which they're basing it. They're basing it off the end of Vanilla WoW, but everything from the end of Vanilla WoW, whenever you try and match it up with the early content, I, I, I think it, it it's going to cause some issues, right? Private servers weren't authentic. They were absurdly overtuned and had so much in their spaghetti code that never even existed in Vanilla. That's true. Uh, if people are expecting that, then it won't be authentic. But my point is authenticity is sloppy, poorly variable to measure because it's arbitrary. Um... I agree with the first part of what you're saying, right? And you're not, I don't think you're particularly wrong, Lupus Deus. I think that, I think that you're never going to hit this point, right? Of what's really authentic. But I think that you can take steps in order to kind of move the needle this way closer towards it. Towards that authentic vanilla experience. Thanks for the beta keys. Frick. <laughs> there's no beta keys. Yeah, there's no beta keys. Uh, this class has 30 planned for a date soon. Whenever Stay Safe gets back, we want to do that. Uh, let me take a look at subs and resubs real quick. Uh, XE, thank you for the eight months. Feral Snow Milf, thank you for the 10 months. Schmoopy, thank you for the three months. Appreciate that, guys. Just a quick thought. Everyone's saying Fury Warriors are going to tank. Is that just because of how it's done on private servers? Is it something that might change that in raids is different uh, threat mechanics or damage done by enemies? Um... So here, some people were theory crafting that basically you can hit like zero armor on a boss based on data mine values and stuff without, uh, without a BRE, right? So like, which would increase melee damage more. Uh, but there's also some things like mechanically, like people go fury and they fury tank with all their world buffs, right? Fury tanking gets like a big nerf whenever, if you lose your world buffs, uh, at least in the, like the early patches, right? Like MC and, and BWL patches. Um, <clears throat> part of it is... As Fury, you can sit, you get crit, you get an enraged proc, and then you do more damage. You do more damage, you generate more threat. Uh, sit critting doesn't really work, but now stand critting does, where you can try and sit, stand up at exactly the time that you get hit. This is not a batching thing. This is something else altogether. I don't know if it's a bug or what, but you can stand at the exact time that you're getting hit, procs a crit, uh, or procs a crit reactive proc, which is enraged, and then you, you do more damage, generate more threat. Now, the problem with this is it's very inconsistent, where in the past, uh, you sat, you got crit, it worked. But it's very, very inconsistent. Just for uh, because months. if you miss, you can still get crit and not proc the proc. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you for the 11 months, Fugs. Appreciate that, dude. Uh, but that authenticism, although central for lots of us, might be in 100 different, slightly different places if you ask 100 people who are 10 years apart in age. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, sure. Right, but that's why like you're you're trying to move the needle closer towards it, right? As opposed to hitting a specific point. So, banana suit now? Yeah, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> is it okay that I'm getting too excited for classic? Yes, it's okay, Beric. Um, are they never doing the final stress test? I'm unsure. I'm unsure. Uh, I don't really know. I I, I don't really know. We notify people accepted the guild. What server to create a character on when it goes live, or do we have to try and guess? Uh. I, I will make like a Discord server for everybody and I, and I will let people know uh, beforehand. So, uh, and, and then I, I would hope that these people who, who managed to get into the server uh, would not release that information until probably like the second day or whatever. Uh, would you want them to revert the changes that were in phase six? If they don't, wouldn't that make the end game feel less authentic at the end? Well, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like uh, what I was talking about earlier is everything, like all things considered is fine for phase six. It's great. It's perfect for phase six. Um, but you don't want it to negatively impact the, the majority of the rest of the game. So, uh, if, if they have some things in there to make MC and stuff more difficult early on or, or whatever, right. You don't want to, you don't want to make it artificially difficult, right. But you want to increase the difficulty in order for it to be closer to being a more authentic experience. You see what I'm saying? What's wrong with phase one? People had that experience in 2006. Yeah, but they didn't have that experience in 2004, or early 2005, right? 
um, where where that that would be the point of phase one, right? Uh, auction house will be flooded with epic fires, this items, and dark knight destroying. Thorium wrap was not sellable before a BWL patch. Um, yeah, I, I think. I mean, you you always kind of have that where like people are people are trying to sell fires as items and stuff like that. It, it always sells really well. <clears throat> um, let's see. Yes, but if we make the early phase more difficult, would you want them to revert those changes to phase six to make it more authentic? Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought enough about that. Um, initially, like you might say yes to that, right? If you're going for authenticity, right? Um, but I, that's that's not really something I was thinking about right off the bat. I was, I was thinking more so about the beginning of the game. In your opinion, do you think with the delay of the stress test, they will delay the release date? I don't think the release date is going to get delayed. I, I think that I think that when the stress test is is not particularly going to affect the, the release date. I think the stress test more than anything, uh, I think more than anything, the, the delay on the stress test probably had something more so to do with, okay, we want to make sure we have everything that we want to test in this final stress test ready to go. And we're not there right now. So let's not waste a stress test. And we're just going to push the stress test back. Uh, I think classic will crash and burn. Not only that, but I believe people that even claim that they'll quit within months after having 60, but I believe people that even claim they'll like it will quit within months after having 60. Uh, why do you think that though? I mean, maybe, maybe the latest stress test doesn't even happen. Maybe it just gets straight up canceled. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't see that. What's up frag monkey. How's it going, dude? If they wait until after name reservations, they'll have many more folks. Sub distress test. Um, yeah. To be honest, I think that alone probably makes a good idea for them to do it after after the naming reservations, right? I think that's better for the players. I think that's better for the players, and I also think that's better for them, right? Because they can get more people stress testing it, and they can really just pump the thing, right? Uh, I've checked the dates of the patch releases in Berlin. Basically, it's as you said. We'll be getting a 2006 final, not 2004. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, I mean, I, and, and that's kind of like, uh, that's kind of the concern right now. That's kind of the concern that I have right now. Uh, any information on how many servers will we have? No, there's no no information on that now. Uh, do, you th do you find it fair that Asmo will reach people guild ass publicly on a stream? Yes, I do the same thing, Pyroflexin. I, I do the exact same thing. And and I think if you're if you're applying to the guild, like, you know that he's going to do that, right? Like, he, he says that he's going to do guild apps on stream, right? Like, I do the same thing. It literally, I... I Put it in the app. I'm like, yo, I'm I'm gonna read these on stream. So if you don't want me to read it on stream, don't fill out an application. Game across your own just resub for eleven months. One more month. One more month. Twenty eight days. Actually, I think we're about to close in on twenty seven days. To be honest, and we're in the twenty seven day range. About twenty eight days away though. Uh, what level do Ret Paladins get powerful? Uh, level eighty. <laughs> Do you think they'll take the name of action reservations into account and balance factions on servers accordingly before launch? Uh, I don't know if they're going to like make like a super server or something like that. I, I, they've done that in the past, allegedly. Um, I, allegedly, they did that to, I think, Swifty server back whenever like streaming was first a thing. Is that right? Has anybody else heard this? I don't know if this is even true. Like they, they made, I think it was Dark Spear, right? They made Dark Spear, they just like pumped it. Yes? Okay, yeah. Considering the pushback of the stress test is probably the reason for it. Our plan is to have English, French, German, and Russian language realms designated in the final stress test. While we haven't yet finalized the number of realms and realm types for each language, we'll let you know those details before name reservations start on August 13th. Oh, so maybe they are going to wait. Maybe they are going to wait to do the stress test after, uh, after name reservations. Maybe. I'm going to try and play classic, but I have school. Yeah. Well, here's the good thing about classic. Wow. It's that this game is, is far more friendly, far more player friendly or casual friendly than, than people give it credit for. Uh, and I think that if you are in school or something like that, you can still get a level of enjoyment. You can still feel rewarded by playing the game and, uh, and you're going to have stuff to do where you can feel like your character is progressing. You can feel like the RPG elements, the MMO elements of the game. You, you, can, you can still feel that, even if you're playing a little bit more casually. So, and the opens in months. I played it the other day. You missed it. Is Jana Display pre-nerf version or post-nerf? It is pre-nerf. Jana, 
The Jaina disc plate is pre-nerfed. Yes. Guys, by the way, exclamation point disc plate. Boom. There it is. Look at that. You see that? Pre-nerf. That is a that is a pre-nerf Jaina for you guys. Very good. You guys like that? Exclamation point display. You can check out display. Uh, I'm sponsored by them. Look at that. Look how look how happy these guys are. Look, they're very excited about Jaina, pre nerf Jaina. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah. I was watching the race over first. Yeah, I know, I know. Dude, everybody was watching the world first race. Everybody. Uh clean your room? No. <laughs> I actually didn't clean my room. Um how do you protect the realms that we handled on launch? And do you think they'll be released alongside name reservations? I, I That's what I think. I think they're going to just announce everything all at once. Uh, as far as realms being handled a specific way on launch, I, I don't know about that. Uh, I think it's just they're just going to let it roll, right? <clears throat> Where can we submit classic guild apps? It's in my Discord. He's rapping on that stage? Yeah, he is. He is. So, okay. So kind of going back to the topic at hand, right? Um, this is basically, like I said, this is basically something that's been on my mind lately. Uh, and, and, and I think, and I, I would hope that Blizzard goes through and tests this, uh, and makes a proper decision on this, right? That they don't, this last bullet point, avoid messing with the 1.12 data. Don't hit this bullet point at the cost of this bullet point, delivering an authentic experience, because everything that's been said, talking about how you have 1.12 itemization, 1.12 talent, class balance changes, all that stuff, you have 16 debuff slots, everything is based off the end game, the bosses and everything, they're all post nerf, right? They're gonna do the testing, they're gonna figure all this out, but I kinda wanna hear from you guys and, and not kind of, I definitely, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from the community. Like, what is your guys' opinion on this? Uh, because the way that I feel is that I, I think that you have to be willing to, I, I think that it's okay to be willing to touch up some stuff behind the scenes in order to make the finished product and what the user experience, the player experience is closer to an authentic experience, right? Because like I said, at the end of the day, you can like if you go up and you're looking at data tables and this and that and whatever, like sure, some people care about that stuff. That's fine. But the typical player is, does not care about that. This is not something that's going to affect like the one percent of the player base. Right. I think I think the top one percent is going to go in and smoke the content. Right. Um, if not finishing new raid content in the first day, they'll, they'll probably finish it in the first week. Right. I, I would say almost definitely. Uh, that's what the one percent is going to do either way. But I do think this affects the majority of the rest of the player base, right? The, the typical player. They should definitely adjust the numbers, otherwise things will be a complete joke. And only worthwhile thing to do will be the random stuff in PvP. PvE will be obsolete. Yeah, and uh, again, I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that is basically what I'm afraid of too. So... Nivek underscore relic just resubbed for three months. Smile. Smile. Thank you for the three, one, three months, Nivek. So, uh, with that being said, that is Daily Dose of Classic number two. So, I, I, might, I might take these and post these on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, subscribe, do that thing, comment. Let me know what you think about this, right? This is, I, I think this is something that is a genuine concern, right? Um, we don't really know the answer, right? We don't really know how things are going in testing. Nobody really knows. But I do think this is something that people should be more willing to talk about. Hi, YouTube. Yeah, hi, YouTube. See you guys next time.